Hey there, welcome on in. Today I wanted to speak to you um, about something that might be influencing your life and that's inflammation. You see, inflammation I find affects a lot of my clients in the fact that it can cause pain, it can cause um, chronic disease, it can stop them living their life to the fullest. So I wanted today to touch base on inflammation and how you can take charge of it through what you eat and what you what you put into your mouth and what you fuel your body with so we all know that what you eat you become and if you've heard me speak before you would know that i always say that food you are what you eat you are you, you use food as your medicine and so what i want to in, implant with you today is that we can use foods to help to control inflammation which then can help to control disease conditions and chronic pain and even prevent future future diseases from coming about you see many chronic diseases such as any of the autoimmune diseases dementia diabetes obesity cancers they're all driven by inflammation and the great news is that 70 percent risk of these can be controlled by diet lifestyle what you do what you think and what you eat isn't that exciting that you can control what goes on or you can reduce 70% of that risk can, can be reduced by what you do in your everyday life. Because only 30% of this actually is contributed directly from the genetics. What you do influences your genes. And that's where I find it all so exciting. Um, it's, the, it's the science of epigenetics. And I do get a little bit um, passionate about the epigenetics and how we can control our health or control our prevention of disease from that, that viewpoint, or even helping to control disease as well. So getting back to inflammation, if your, what you eat influences your inflammatory response of the body, then by selecting certain eating patterns, we can help to control inflammation. And don't get me wrong, we want a little bit of inflammation in the body, occasionally. So small amounts of inflammation, you might create an inflammatory response when your body comes in contact with something like a virus or a bacteria and we need to mount a defense for the immune system to um, overcome that infective agent or if you cut yourself if you injure yourself and we need an, a, a short-term inflammatory response to help promote healing of the body so think of it as a little spot fire but it's controlled and it gets squashed really quickly Chronic inflammation is long term, it's uncontrolled, it's a bit like out of control bushfires. Very hard to get back under control and it can do a lot of damage to the body and to the surrounding areas. So by reducing inflammation in the body, that out of control chronic inflammation, we can help to prevent the damage and, and the destruction that goes on in the body. And the damage and destruction is what the disease condition comes about from. So the autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, dementia, those disease conditions, even diabetes can come about because of that out of control inflammation. So if you're suffering from any form of chronic inflammation, any of these disease conditions, any even chronic pain where you've got a chronic niggling injury that just won't go away, looking at your diet and looking at your eating plan can help to reduce down the inflammation and help your body heal itself again. So I can think of a of, I can think of a client at the moment that I've been working with, and she is a mum of two young kids, and suddenly found that she wasn't able to play with them as much. She was in pain. She wasn't able to do her her Pilates and her exercise. Um, but the thing is she wasn't able to get on the floor and kneel on the floor to play with the kids and so this pain was impacting on her life she then got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and was like what do i do next how, how do i deal with this and came to me to get some support and assistance and a bit more information about what um what was available to her i worked with her with her nutrition her her eating plan and the fact that looked at the foods that was contributing to the increase in inflammation of her body. So we just made some minor changes to her eating plan, increased her um, essential fatty acids like the omega-3s 
and I used a herbal formula combination to help support the and balance the immune system. And within a couple of months, she was reduced, she had reduced pain. She could get back on the floor and play with her kids again. She could start, she started running. She went for a run. She told me the other day that she went for a run for the first time in months and it, it, it was okay. It didn't hurt. Um, and she felt good again. She felt like she could get back to being her full self again, that she could be her the best version of herself because she was able to be interactive with everything that with everything she wanted to do with her life. So it was amazing impact for her. And I, and I love watching those kinds of scenarios, those kinds of changes. And along the way, she also lost some weight through this process um, just by changing her eating plan and reducing this inflammatory response because inflammation does impact on our waistline as well. And then I can think of another beautiful gentleman um, came to me with the diagnosis of, again, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, he's in his late 60s, very active, has been very active with all kinds of sports just because he loves doing all different kinds of sports. I think there was about five or six different sports that he loved to interact with and it really helped his mental health and his positive outlook on life. And like I said, he came to me with rheumatoid arthritis, lots of pains all over the body. And again, I worked with him with looking at what he was eating. How could we make some minor changes? And it was only minor changes for him. Um, some minor changes, again, looking at the good fats, the essential fatty acids um, of, of his diet. And again, used a herbal formulation. And within a very short amount of time, he also had his pain reduced and, and was without pain. To the point that he could go back to running and he he was in a running club and he loved running but he had to say to the club look i can't do this anymore i just can't keep running with you guys because it's too painful so he's back running with them again and he's back enjoying life and being um being happy in his life because he can do all of these things that he's wanting to do to the point that he's considering doing the gold coast marathon that's coming up um He's thinking about it, he, he, he's working on seeing what he's capable of doing, but this is how much changing your eating program can help to support and reduce your inflammatory response. So how can you do that? If, you're, if you've got um, inflammatory conditions going on in the body, chronic pain, autoimmune diseases, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, any of these conditions, or even a prevalence to those. And when I say prevalence, it could be that it's in your family history, that there's a family history of autoimmune disease or dementia. So for instance, I've got a family history of my mum passing of dementia and I know that there's a lot that I can do for my own body to help to reduce that risk by helping to reduce the inflammatory response. So if you're feeling like you want to, if you're feeling like you want to prevent disease or, or help conquer disease, then looking at your eating program is the essential way of doing this. So number one is to supercharge your plate. What do I mean by that? Have a meal that's based on salad, fruits and veggies. But when it's based on salad, fruits and veggies, have a rainbow of colors. Rainbow of colors of, um, of salad, fruits and veggies on your plate. It doesn't have to have all of them together. You might pick, it might be a great salad with all different colors. Or it might be a vegetable dish, a stir fry, something like that with, again, all different colors because the more variety of colors you can get, the more antioxidant nutrients, the more um, you can help to, the more those phytochemicals in that meal can help to fight inflammation. To reduce, it can also reduce your calories because the those salad fruits and veggies are usually less calories than some other foods that you might fill your plate with. So, and it can also help to curb your cravings because you're getting all of the key nutrients that your body needs in that salad, fruits and veggies. And then with that, with that supercharged plate, you can then add your, in your other foods to it. So it might be if you eat meat, you might add some meat, chicken, fish, um, eggs. You might add your grains or your pseudo grains nuts and seeds, beans, whatever it is that you want to add to it, but have the majority of your plate being those plant-based foods, the salad fruits and the veggies with as much color and variety as you can get. And then the next tip I have for you is to increase your omega fatty acids. And the omega-3s are very important to help to communicate with our genetics to reduce down 
reduced anti-inflammatory response. So um, um, essential fatty acids like the omega-3s um, come from your olive oil, your salmon, your deep sea fish, um, nuts and seeds. And so by incorporating the omega-3s, it can help to reduce inflammation in your body. It can help to support your brain health. And there are some studies that can actually that show it can actually help you to burn your unwanted fats and help with some weight loss there as well. The third tip I have for you with um, incorporating an anti-inflammatory eating program into your life is to reduce your refined sugar. So refined sugar or processed sugars contribute to inflammation. They create an inflammatory response in the body. They influence our gut flora and our gut flora is very important to helping support our, our, inflama in, our inflammation. And there's a lot of research that's showing that the gut microbes communicate with our genetics of our body, which then can increase or decrease our inflammatory load. So processed sugar increases our inflammation and it changes our gut flora. So it's all about, and it depletes our vital nutrients that we can also use to support our immune system, support the healing processes of the body. So reducing down any refined sugars. If you do have a sweet tooth, there's lots of other whole foods that you can use to still satisfy those little sweet, those, those taste buds um, without robbing your body of nutrients and increasing your inflammation. So then also looking at whole foods. And so that's, that incorporates sort of the last, the last point about reducing refined sugar, but it's also reducing processed foods or foods that have been processed in any way that they no longer have the complete picture. So the whole foods usually have um, an increased fibre load. So you think about something um, refined like white bread. There's not a lot of fibre added to it unless the processor adds the fibre back in and then creates it as a marketing ploy. So your whole foods, your whole grain cereals, your plant-based foods, your pseudo grains, your quinoa, those kinds of nutrients, having them as a whole food increases your fiber content. Again, supports the gut flora of your body. So that supports your overall health and reduces inflammation. And it assists your blood sugar levels so that you stay more level in your blood sugar and less likely to put on weight because of these whole foods. And then tip number five is to have regular activity. Whatever it is you can do, if you're in pain, obviously can't go for a run, but whatever you could do that's active and, and keeps you going. So, or keeps you moving without a lot of pain to it. But regular activity has been shown that it can reduce the inflammatory response of the body and it increases our endorphins, so our feel good hormones. And it helps with weight loss as well. But there is a lot of research showing that the consistent regular exercise, no matter what it is, influences again our genetics, which reduces our inflammatory load. So that's some five great tips that you could put into your everyday lifestyle and everyday eating plan that can help to reduce inflammation. And if you do find it overwhelming, start with one, start with one tip, make it habit, make it lifestyle, make it part of your daily routine so that it's there every day without you thinking about it. And then add the next step in and then add the next step so that you then have a lifestyle full of habits that support your body, support your health and reduce daily inflammation. And if you're needing any help with that, then look to a health professional that has experience in nutritional, nutritional suggestions, nutrition, supporting nutrition, supporting an eating program that helps you in the long term. I don't like using the word diet because it sounds restrictive. Whereas if we talk about it as an eating program or an eating plan, it's daily habits, it's routines, it's everything that you can do without feeling like you're being robbed, without feeling like it's too hard to do. And that's where naturopathic medicine can shine with that because we can look at the diet and your eating program and your lifestyle, and we can also incorporate some beautiful medicinal herbs to help fast track and support this process as well. So I'm Teresa Todd, Conquering Health Naturopath and Biochemist. And if you're looking at needing some support, I'd love to be able to help you on your journey. Thanks for joining me today and have a great day. See you next time.